I have different things for different, you know, the la- the question on everybody's mind the last week, and I'll answer you all right now, is Joey, when are you going to the Weed Cafe? Listen to me and no. listen to me good. If there's 10 big black guys with 10 big dicks and me having to go into that weed cafe in Hollywood, I'll stand in the line and take the 10 big black dicks. That, 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 I've been that. smoking dope since I was 12. I, mean, I, mean, I'll just, I, mean, I, I don't, don't go need to go to room. So for all you church weed. people <laughs> who have heard about this uh, cafe and are interested in it, please stop listening. Because if I catch you in there, you're getting your stripes taken from you. You have to pay a cover. We're the church. We don't go. We don't go to places to make believe we get high. We get high. We get high to get high. You don't have to go to a cafe in L.A. and sit around with other people. Oh my God, this is so cool. I wouldn't. The kid who told me today, the guy who told me today, came up to me at nine fifteen when I was hitting the bag at kickboxing today. I went to kickbox and I was kicking the bag and he's like, hey man, have you been there? And when I looked at him and gave him my answer, he's like, you should have seen his face. Like I'm thinking of calling him and apologizing. I didn't mean to. Because I de-winded everything he had because he's older. He should know better. If a 20 year old comes up to me and go, have you been to the weed cafe in Hollywood? I get it, you're a fucking uh, moron. But if a 50 year old kid comes up to me and says, have you been to the weed cafe? In Hollywood, I'll go, hey, get it together. And that's what I told him. Hey, you should have seen the look. I feel terrible. I have to call him today. I got to get a number from a girl in kickboxing and call him and apologize. I don't go to those things. I'm fucking, I've been smoking those since I was 12. Well, I don't, it's what do just, I need to do to Weed Cafe to prove to you there was that a, I'm cool? There was a dab lounge for a while in yeah. this in Studio City or somewhere around there that they did shows in. It was cool because you go in this head shop and then there was like a, uh, a like a bookshelf, and you pull the bookshelf open, and then there's a back hallway, and there's like a club. And it was like a lot of like the early, I think like money people in dabs would go back there, and then they'd throw you dabs and stuff. And it was like six months. I would they still once. do comedy up here? No, that place closed. Yeah. Really? And there was a dispensary on Vineland that had comedy for a while, but it uh, I think I think it was before the recreational stuff and they kept it open as long as they could but i went to buy a car last week and i went to subaru and i brought my car up there and i traded it in the lease and i got the new crossfit whatever the fuck it's called i got a little back now to put my daughter's toys back there i can put my jujitsu bag in there and it doesn't leave i don't have to put it in the back seat and it smells smelly or whatever but while i was at the subaru place fuck i forgot what i was gonna tell you uh, just uh, loyalty, I think. Customer loyalty, well, like a relationship. Oh, what the fuck are we talking about here? I went over to the Subaru place, and it's my sick car that I've gotten from them. So it's it's a real fucking fast deal. Like, it's really fast. But when I was sitting there, Jesus Christ, I got to stop smoking pot with you. <laughs> I'm a bad influence, I'm sorry. Jesus Christ. I hate this shit when you mind and the thoughts right there and all of a sudden you 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 look up and the thought just fucking disappears, you know what I'm saying? I deal with it three times a day with this stuff. Like it it just goes immediately with weed. It's amazing how it can be there for 8 minutes and then as soon as you want to say it it's gone. The other night I was thinking of a joke in the middle of the night. I went to write and I fucking forgot. <laughs> From my bedroom to the office, I forgot the fucking joke. I sat in the hallway for 10 minutes in shock. <laughs> I go, I remember all the dumb shit in my life, but I can't remember a good joke I read in the fun. And I wrote it, took the mask off, <coughs> ushered it to myself three fucking times, walked into the fucking living room, saw my sneakers there, and I go, damn, I got to move these things because I don't want the baby to fall on them. Oh, no. By the time I got to the fucking office, I forgot the goddamn joke. That motherfucker. Motherfucker is right. Do you have That's, to keep a pad in your bedroom now or something? Well, like, I got no lights in there, so I can't turn the fucking light on and wake my wife up and tell her, hold, hold on one second. <laughs> I just thought of a fucking stupid joke or some shit like that because she wouldn't... Uh, wouldn't fly? No, she wouldn't fucking fly. That makes sense. So anyways, it's Subaru. Huh? Subaru. I like it. It's a great car. I'm happy I got it. Uh, I don't I forgot what the fuck the train of thought was altogether. I was oh. thinking about it this morning. I hate marijuana gear. I've never been privy to marijuana gear. Yeah. 
okay, I do not like it. Uh -huh. There's no reason why I should have a shirt with a pot leaf on it. Yeah. And then get mad if a cop pulls Yeah, why me put over. a target on your back? Yeah, I've always been one of those guys. Yeah. So whenever people give me anything marijuana-ish, I always throw it away or I give it to whatever, the, the home over here, this place on North Hollywood. Yeah. Some guy gave me a sh there was a dispensary. The guy was a baker. Him and his family got together, and he was a baker in Beverly Hills. And he opened up this little dispensary in, in a in a head shop in Hollywood. And he went out of his way and he made these gorgeous shirts. And it was just a shirt, not even marijuana, but like that heart with the thing going around it. What's it called? The hemp? No, not fucking hemp. The 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 fucking what they call these people. That smoke marijuana. They call them something. Compatriots or whatever okay. the fuck they are. Who knows? All right. What was the symbol for that? Didn't really, uh, you know, it wasn't like a joint or something, but it really wasn't the, the, the symbol for marijuana, but people knew it as the medical marijuana. People in the shirt. know, no. No. Yeah. So it was a, a weird yellow shirt. And I like this shirt. It was fucking comfortable. You ever have a shirt that's Absolutely. just fucking comfortable? Absolutely. And then I had another shirt that I found like that, the same manufacturer, like a fucking Walmart in Houston. And I bought because that's where you shop when you're fat, Houston. <laughs> and that's, oh yeah, when you're a fat fuck. <laughs> Houston is get, the place? Houston's the place All because right. they cheat you on the sizes. Like right now, what are you, a medium? Yeah, I'm a medium. In Houston, you're a fucking double X. Okay. <laughs> because they make you big, so you get there and go, I'm losing weight. Give Look me the this. cheesecake. You know what I'm saying? They don't want you fucking missing meals. <laughs> so what the fuck are we talking about here? I forgot. The here. symbol of the shirt, the, the, the comfortable shirt, the, the yellow comfortable shirt. shirt. So I get up one morning. I got to go to My Name is Earl. I think I'm taking the yellow shirt I bought at Walmart. Yeah. But once I get in the fucking car... And I'm driving, I look down, and it's the fucking symbol shirt. <laughs> That's the last thing I want on a TV fucking set, especially on an NBC show. You're not that fucking stupid, Joey. But I was already three quarters up there. Yeah. I couldn't turn around. I looked for like a clothing store. Again, 2X is not going to fit me. I'm not walking on that set looking like a two-pound bologna in a one-pound bag. So that's not going to happen. So I tried to turn the shirt around. I yeah. Go, I'll turn the shirt around. Well, the guy had the symbol on the other side, like something fucking He had you crazy. covered. So as soon as I walk into your set, people are like, what up, man? Everybody was like, I'm like, what? Oh, hi. And I didn't know what was going on. And then I looked at the fucking thing, and I'm like, oh. So I knew, like, I was telling you when you walked in, that when I went to that audition, I hate those, those producer ones, those five-man rooms. Yeah. I do well in them. I don't dislike them. But when I saw the look on your face, it took that, like it made me say. It was just joy, man. I was happy to see you it, there. You know what I thought? I was like, I'm, I don't give a fuck now. Like, it's my dog. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. He knows what I can do. Yeah, absolutely. Fuck the lines. Let's just go for it. I don't yeah. give a fuck if I sing an opera song. He knows what time it is. Auditions are rough, man. I, 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 I get stressed during auditions, yeah, you know, so because, uh, you know, it's so hard. And, and, and the, I think the hardest part about auditions and being an actor is you come in and you read for, for a part. And what you don't know sometimes is, you know, we'll have, I mean, a pilot, you'll have, you know, whatever, 100 people come in there and read for it. But just, just an episode of TV, maybe 10, 15 people come in and read for a part. You could have hired nine of them. You know, nine of them could could have been great. They could have been fine. But you got to pick somebody, right? Some people look like what is in your head. So it's their job to kind of lose it when they come in. Other people, you think, oh, that's, that's not what I had in my head. And then it's their job to get it, and that'll happen too. But everybody just gets a no for the most part. You know, it's not like you get a no with an explanation or this was how it ranked. You came in third, you know, nobody, you know, and you, so you just got to brush that off your back and keep going. But that would, that would be very tough. That would be very tough for me to be like, what, well, you know, was I close? Was it, you know, to not get that feedback. You're on a set, you're acting, you get the feedback. Somebody say, I'll do this line this way, this way, this way, you know. A lot of times with the auditions, it's going so fast or it's just the casting director reading and you're looking at it on tape, you don't have the time necessarily to work with somebody and give notes and, you know, you try sometimes when you can, but you don't always give people that benefit. So you come in, you get one shot, and then you don't necessarily know why, you know, it didn't work. My first two years, it would bother me. Yeah. Like, not bother me extremely. I mean, I'm not stupid. I know when it's a bad read, you know. I would try to prepare, you know, I went to acting class, the whole fucking thing. <laughs> and my whole thing was cold reading. Once 
when I got here, you're going to understand this. I had a manager that was way better than what I was. Mm -hmm. So he was getting me into big time rooms, and I was falling apart at the seams. But once I put comedy and the auditions together, and I just said, this is a seven minute set. What the yeah. fuck am I doing? What am I turning this into fucking Chinese arithmetic for? <laughs> I was going into like Stanislavski. This is fucking comedy. Yeah. This is what I do. What yeah. the fuck? That's when it started clicking. But it wasn't. It took about three or four years of auditioning to get over those whys. And then one day I realized I got the breakdowns. And that is the worst thing you could do as an actor. Yeah. You will shoot yourself. Because you think you're right for 20 things. <laughs> and when you don't go out for all 20 of them, you're, yeah. you're killing your agent. But there's variables involved. There's directors who have a brother-in-law who's retarded and needs a job. His <laughs> wife's going to fucking leave him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they know that they stuff. Don't, They're they not going to waste your time with going so in there. So that was a one mistake I did that once I've never gotten the breakdowns again. Yeah. Like I stopped in 2005. Like that was it. That was a year of torture. That was a year I hated everybody. Why, I'm not, why am I not going in for this? Because there's fucking variables involved. Yeah. Now. You don't know what the fuck's involved. They already, when you write something, do you know 90% of the time who you want, Mr. G? Sometimes. I mean, sometimes you write yeah. it, sometimes you write it with somebody in mind that you know is, is but it's a type and you know that you're not going to get that person or that person's busy or something. But a lot of times, especially now, you've worked with so many people, you're like, oh, okay, I think I can, you know, I can write this and I think I can get them for this or whatever. Yeah, you, you have an idea in your mind. And that, that takes me back sometimes to the audition process. If I don't get that person and somebody walks in and they look nothing like the person, then it's hard for me until they start opening their mouth. And then, then if they get the part, then it's like they earn that part. Because then it was like, because I was predisposed as soon as they walked in to go, ah, it's not the, that's not what's in my head. And then they change what's in your head. And that's, you know, that's pretty spectacular for them. I don't want to give nobody, as Jimmy Schubert says, the short shrift. Mm -hmm. You follow me? I was just out of it last night. The yeah. five and a half hour flight with the fucking baby. Oh, that's miserable, dude. See, by myself, I'll eat a fucking pot cookie. Right. And I get stoned. You and I fall family. asleep for half. But when you have the family, you got to okay. be. And I got caught smoking vapor on the fucking pen. Mm. Tremendous. Mm -mm. I had one of those uh, vapor pens, and I just filled it up. It was, it was it was just brand new. I took the inhaler with me. They have mm -hmm. an asthma inhaler now. So I took for the, the pot for the reefer. That yeah. Oh, it, it's dabs. It fucks you up. So I took that with me to New York, and I sprayed it twice. You know, a couple times on the plane, and it kept me there. And then I hit it when I was in New York, and I hit it with Ari when I went over to see the tree and the fucking uh, Saks Fifth Avenue and all that shit. And I ran out, so I had this brand new tube. It's a gram of oil from Perennial, and I opened it up before I got on the plane. I charged so? it up. First ten hits. It's like fucking death hits. Like, they just fucking clouds of smoke. So I hit it two times. Then I got on the plane. And like two hours into the flight, I look at my daughter. And every time I would hit it, it would go by my daughter because she had the window seat. So I go, I can't let her have it. So I go, let me go to the bathroom. I'm Damn. in the bathroom with the fucking iPod on, listening to Pink Floyd. No, you're not. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I am. I got the you're iPod plane, on. Bro. This is how fucking crazy <laughs> I am. I'm, I'm not listening. It's Wish You Were Here. That's the album I'm listening to because it was like Shine On You Crazy Diamond what? and Have a Cigar. I'm f I ate edibles. I had a, I had like three, four red stars. Oh, so you had a little magic in your system. Oh, I was fucked. I, had, I was fucked up for the first two and a half hours because I, I didn't get fucked up on the way there and it made a big difference. I got agitated on the two-hour mark. At the two and a half hour mark, if you don't have something, once the move, once Mad Max is finished, right. you're ready to kill a motherfucker <laughs> on a flight. Mad Max is not the movie to watch on a fucking plane, because there you are sitting, there, everybody's driving, <laughs> jumping over people and shit, shooting motherfuckers, and you're sitting there next to like some fucking politician or some shit. You want to get up. You want to get up. So I said, "Fuck that." So I dosed myself on the way out. Damn. I had Virgin. I had uh, main cabin select. It's the one behind first class, mm -hmm. so we could all sit together. Because in first class, we couldn't all sit together. I would have to sit by myself, and she'd be fucking crawling back and forth. So we're like, "Fuck that." Just get the main cabin select. How tall is the child you have? She's a fucking midget. She's three. You know, she's just a little baby. But how tall do you think she is? Uh, she's up to. Oh, that's two. that's not very tall. No, she's a little baby. Oh, that's not so very tall. So I got up. I go to the bathroom. I close the fucking door, and I'm in there. And I'm hitting this pen, and I see clouds, Theo. And I'm like, wow. What and color I'm was that? Fucking clouds of smoke, and I'm hitting this vapor. 
and I'm hitting this fucking sound. <laughs> with your iPod on. With the iPod on, <laughs> listen to fucking fuck? shine on you crazy diamond. And all of a sudden I hear, <laughs> and I see the little red light going on. They're like, open up. Are you smoking in there? And I put the thing in my pocket, <laughs> and I take this out, and I blow a couple clouds of this shit. And I go, hold on. Like I'm putting my dick in my pants, which I really did piss. And then I fucking wash my hands. And I up and down, I go, what's the problem? And she goes, were you smoking in here? I go, no. Wow. I go, do I look like I was smoking in here? <laughs> do I look like And she it? looked at me, she goes, does it smell like smoke? And she took, oh, they take everything out, the garbage. They do everything. They look for really? the cigarette. Yeah. Oh, wow. And now what were you doing the whole time to stand in there? I'm like, standing there going, I don't do know anything. what happened. I banged it. When I came in, the plane shifted and I hit the wall. And that's the next thing you know, you people were knocking on my thing. And they're like, we don't smell no smoke. I wonder what made it go off. And I'm sitting there going, they fucking know. They're just playing me. Oh, really? But then they were cool the rest of the flight. Espionage, bro. I sat there. They were cool. And then at the end, I gave my wife the keys. I told my wife, I go, listen, they called me in the bathroom. Uh, I'm going to get arrested, so take the car keys. I'll see you at the house. What did she say? She just fucking looked the other way and like shook her head. What is my wife going to fucking say at this age? Damn. I'm 50. What, what are you going to say to me? You're punished? <laughs> Well, that, <laughs> and then I walked off the fucking plane like I owned LA. Wow. Nobody said dick to me. And that was, did you think, though, somewhere in your head that whenever you got to LA, there was going to be people? Oh, there? fuck yeah. They've been waiting uh, for me before. I've been approached at the plane one time on the way to Columbus. I is it kind of cool or is it just fucking not cool? If you're getting off a plane, you got an ounce of weed in your nutsack. Yes. Yeah, it ain't fucking cool. Be uncomfortable. But if you get off the plane and you're cool, you know, you don't like the one time I was in Columbus, I had weed on me and some guy said, I didn't do nothing. He leaned back and I go, hold on one second. He turned around. He goes, fuck you. So I said, fuck you. So I kicked the chair and he went and told the story. So I was the bad guy the rest of the fucking flight. Damn. Oh, jeez. And then do you start to feel like the fucking bad guy too? You're like, oh, you oh, want a nah, bad you, guy? Oh, you start yeah. saying shit in your head. You yeah. want a fucking bad yeah, guy? Fuck with me, cocksucker. Put that seat back again. Yeah. And here's what happened. We went to Columbus. They got us off the plane. They got uh, statements from both of us and they let us go. And a year later, I got on the plane. That same fucking guy's on the uh -huh. plane. I go, how you doing? And he just <laughs> sat there the whole time like a little fucking. So in all your years animal. of being on the plane and like having weed under your nut and all that, you never once smoked a cigarette in the plane? No. Wow. In 1983, I was flying. You used back to be to... able to, didn't you? Yeah, you could smoke in the in the flights. In I Russia, was... you can't have heard. Really? Mm hmm. You do you anything smoke? in Russia? Uh uh. No, but, but I but heard that you can though. You could smoke in the in like certain areas you could smoke on a plane. But I'll tell you what I did see one fucking time though. Uh Fuck you broke my tent. I don't even know what I was gonna say to you. Next. Smoking on a plane. Smoking on a plane. Smoking on a plane. Russia. You never once smoked on a plane, yeah? No. But in nineteen eighty four, February nineteen eighty four, I got on the plane in in Aspen. It was Aspen, Denver, Denver, Jersey. On the way back from Denver to Jersey, there was a soldier next to me, and I had a brown bowl and weed. And I'm like, you want to get high? That's when you could smoke cigarettes on a plane. Hey. And he's like, let's go do it. We went to the back fucking other thing. Me and this guy had a wooden fucking bowl. I put the weed in there. We each took two pumps. The fucking whole plane smelled of like course. weed. Of course. Wow. They were pissed. Who's smoking marijuana on the plane? We're going to search. They didn't do shit. I walked out of there with that soldier saluting the cops and shit. <laughs> you got to take a chance from time to time. You know? For a soldier, you got to, bro. I'd get a soldier high. Fuck, I'd get him doped out of his brain if I had enough dope for him. They fucking press heavy-duty charges on you one night, Theo Vaughn. I got so fucked up in an airport. I had 12 ounces of blow on me. And what? I was coming from New Jersey. No. Do people story. from New Jersey get busted for coke more often than other I people? You I think? don't fucking know. I I was a fucking criminal, and I was <laughs> I was living in I was living in Aspen, and coke was eighteen hundred and eighteen hundred an ounce. Right. And I'm like, are you fucking people kidding me? I'm paying eight hundred, and they're fucking beautiful ounces, and I could cut it and still make money. I go fuck it. So I started getting guns and bringing them to the East Coast and started bringing coke back. But this was the problem that I would take the one o'clock flight from uh, New Jersey to Denver, and that's really 3 o'clock, which would get me in there like at 7, mm -hmm. and it would start snowing. I still had to take a connecting flight from Denver to Aspen. Uh, that flight would always get canceled. Here I am in Denver Airport with geeked. 12 ounces of blow, geeked out of my face at the fucking bar. I remember one night I was at the bar just <sighs> drinking, fucking doing lines in the bathroom, and I kept putting the Coke in the locker. And I kept spending all my money in quarters taking the coke out. And I became friends with a guy at a bar. Me and him started snorting. We got fucking lit at 6 a.m. 
I stayed in the airport all night getting fucking Fuck. coked up, jerking off in the men's store, oh. in the fucking bathroom. That is dark and that awesome. That is fucking, yeah, yeah. Dude, dark that's one. the dark side. Oh, my God. That's the worst, bro. When you're just up with your fucking ideas, feeling your fucking pulse. <laughs> you know, those Cubans that came over in 79, it was, uh, it was you know, I, somebody's got to do a documentary of the jail they let them out of. <laughs> like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, just walk through I that see. jail. They weren't American jails. They didn't feed you on time. There's no feeding at seven. They would come in and throw a fucking piece of bread at you, dog. Or they would throw, like, a, a sandwich into a cell with four of us. You know, and no showers. Because those are the dirty. Hard, hardcore criminals from yeah, Cuba, right? Yeah, the Mar yeah, Mariana yeah, yeah. Boat Project or something So like it that? was really weird. I saw the transformation. I saw it right in front. You know, I, it's so weird how I was doing mescaline one day and having a great time with 20 kids mescaline. my age, and all of a sudden nobody's doing mescaline anymore. You know, it went from you needed five dollars to get high. You needed two fifty for a hit of mescaline, and two fifty we could chip in for a six pack. You needed three, four beers and a hit of mescaline. Somebody had a joint. You were good to go, Rodrigo. And all of a sudden, it went from that to people having to spend fifty dollars. You know, there was no sample of cocaine. If you really think the impact that this had on the economy here, you really have to think about 1978, 77. I saw it. I saw people talking. It was spoken in my house since I was a kid. But I was starting to see it more now. I was starting to see it. I knew my mom had white rings around her nose. I knew what time it was. I wasn't retarded. But now I was hearing people talking about it. It was in the clubs. The kids older than me were coming back going, no, no, my matimo perico. Now I was in shock. Like, I just thought my mom and her friends did it. Do you follow me? So now I had to sit there with my tongue tied. I could, you ever done it? No, I don't even know what you're talking about. How old were you? 13. Damn. So 13, it's 1976, and it was already creeping. 77, staying alive, quaaludes and cocaine. 78, 79 was the first time I had some, and it was in a drawer, and it sat in that fucking drawer for months. And then I went to a party one day and decided to take it. I knew I was gonna, I was gonna sell it, but I said fuck it, and I did it. And I didn't, you know, the first year I did blow, it didn't get me off. I thought people were lying to me, like Saturday Night Live. You know, for years people told me it was so funny. I'd go home and I wouldn't laugh. Made with flour. And a bunch of people <laughs> were laughing. And I wouldn't laugh. With coke, I would do coke with people. I'd see them getting all twisted and hiding and shit. And nothing <laughs> was happening to me until one day I had a cocktail. Uh oh. See, I didn't drink. One day I had a beer, and I'm like, oh. That's when that shit clicked. My jaw is clicking. My fingers are getting like I'm a piano player and shit. <laughs> this party's on and shit. You were like Jeff Dunham with no puppets. And then they dropped Scarface on these kids. Yeah, man. It was like taking a generation to Vietnam. You had to see it. Like, I, I fucking saw it. Like, I saw kids that were decent kids, and I'd see them in a bar at four in the morning, like fucking Lucifer. And I would go, oh, shit. And then they weren't smoking crack yet. There was no crack yet. Like, I was still 83, 84. Everybody had it. In 83, if you bumped into the manager, she'd pull you aside and go, listen, a friend of mine uh, left me a kilo. Do you know anybody who could sell it? He said we could make a lot of money. You were bumping into people like that. Like your neighbor will come over and go, Doug, do you know anything about cocaine? It was everywhere. It was everywhere. Everybody had it. 1,800 an ounce. 100 a gram or don't even talk to me. 60 a half a gram. How good was it? It was right off the fucking shipment. They were fucking piling in here. It was glass. It was fucking glass. First time I went to Miami in 84, nobody jawed. You didn't stay up. You didn't stay up. Your eyes got red, like those red veins were in your eyes. You got all red and shit, and you get high, and your dick got hard, and you had a good fucking time, and you were Last loose. Last night had a And yeah, then, over the years, when you started getting, they, they, they started doing something to it. Putting speed in it, or rat poison. Aspirin. And that's, and then, Strictly in 84, 85, people were smoking it in cigarettes in clubs. I went to Cocoa the city Plus. in 85. I was not doing drugs at this time. And people were already, the Colombians, they would go, that's a Colombian table. And you could smell the coke in the air. And they were putting it in fucking cigarettes. And then I went over to the city to get weed one day. Manager, I have been going to the spot since I was fucking 13, 14. It was 148th and Broadway. 
Were you sure these weed stores today? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we. Listen, I was a cop there from fucking 77 to 84 and a half. And then I just started copping in Jersey, and we were copping 178th Street. But if I was on 140th and I was in the neighborhood, I'd go there. It was called the Master Mix. The guy was right on the stoop. Stoop. He was on the stoop. Pigeon. When he went up there, soldier. he had green weed that you never saw then. Nobody had green weed. Damn. It was all the weed from Jamaica up in Harlem. The master mixed. It was the Buddha tie, the chocolate tie. Everybody tie had stick. chocolate tie. He had green weed, and then he put it together, and that was called the master mix. <laughs> and guess what he ah. gave you? A fucking punch card. In 19 fucking 80, homie was already giving you a punch card. What did it say on it? If you bought 10 nickel bags, you got one for It was $10 bags. If you bought 10 $10 bags, uh, you got one for free. Throw his idea. Who the fuck you think you're dealing with? This is on the street. <clears throat> no license, no nothing. I went there, and they go, weed. We don't sell weed no more. This is crack. Crack. It was gone. And it gone, was, the man. little vials were all over the street. And I had never seen that. On a plane with a little vapor pen in the bathroom without setting the alarm off. Forget can you get? It. Can you get away with hitting the vape pen on? Because I, I, so I, because here's the deal is because so we were traveling a lot and I had the the e cigarette vape right, and I go and I had to actually take a shit too. So I go and I, I start taking a shit on, the, which is like the first time I've ever done that. I take a shit on an airplane, and I'm hitting the vape pen. Next thing I know, it's like. It's like, Mr., uh, whoever is in there, you know, the, the fire alarm's going off as he just keeps knocking. And then and I, I'm, I put the vape away and I'm starting to freak out. They opened the door. Luckily, you know, I had my dick and my balls out and I'm sitting on the toilet with my pants down taking a shit. So she goes, oh, I'm so sorry. And she closes the door. But in my head, I'm like, fuck, I'm going to get out of here. They're going to fucking put me in handcuffs. Or they're gonna, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know how this works. No, if they don't see the smoke, they can't do nothing to you. Really? They just eyeball you to death. They Dude, caught me too. But she, but so when I when I got out, she goes, "Oh, I'm so sorry." She goes, "I don't know. We must have a faulty uh, thing in there because yeah, it said it said there was a smoke alarm was going off, and I was like, "No, nah, I have no idea." And I mean, I've never been scared her because that's like a you know, don't you go to jail for that shit? No, nah, it's like a fine, two thousand. They slap your wrist. I like how you said two. No, they they, <laughs> they, they get they, then they knock it down to two hundred in court. You do a. You go in there and do paperwork that you fucking suck dick for a living. <laughs> you get $10 a week you're eating fucking Cheerios like a motherfucker. What you need to do if you want to vape on a pen is you have to take the window out. Because that's where the air conditioning is. Uh, oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And you have to hit it and cover it with a sweater and make believe you're Copernicus. Like you put your hand to it <laughs> and just hit it and blow down. They'll suck it right down. Oh, I've done that a million. Nobody smells. Oh. It's tough to smoke in the aisle seat. That's a tough one. Yeah, you got to have the window seat. Got to have the window, the window seat. seat and, and you, you got to... Listen, the window seat, <laughs> you can hit that vape all fucking oh, four all hours. Flight. Yeah. All four hours. By the time you land, you fucking don't even want to get off. Listen, let's just go back. <laughs> I've just... never... Well, especially if... Because have you ever seen been on the planes where it looks like there's mist coming out of it? Where it's just like a super misty, like right by the window? Oh, that's the best. We were flying to Bonnaroo and I was just... I, was hit, I wasn't even hiding it. I was just... Because I, I had nobody in that row. And I was just hitting uh, the vape. And it would just like blow a cloud under the seat. I but love nobody, it. Oh, it's the best, man. People are retarded, but last time I did it, one of the times I was smoking on the plane, a girl, a young girl kept saying, Mommy, there's smoke. And she kept saying, that's not smoke, that's air conditioning. <laughs> mommy, mommy, I see smoke. Mommy, mommy, I see smoke. And she's like, stop it, Lindsay, that's not smoke. <laughs> and the dad was like, what are you talking about? I see smoke, Daddy, watch. And I would do it on purpose. <laughs> like right after they look away right after they fucking go look what <laughs> and then she finally like an hour in she goes I see something but we don't understand she goes, hmm that's weird okay I'll ask the pilot and that was it nobody said fucking nothing nobody else. cares as long as you don't blow it in anybody's face nobody gives a fuck dude you know what I mean it makes actually the plane smell better do you work the Tempe Improv I don't not yet <clears throat> right, when you work the Tempe Improv they put you in this ritzy boopsy hotel mm -hmm. I've been staying there for years that's what the one time they put Rogan in my room me in Rogan's room I get to Rogan's room I got a palace <laughs> I go downstairs to knock on his door and he's got the little chintzy room I'm like dog <laughs> <laughs> come up later I gotta show you something so we went to dinner on the way back I go look at my room he's like fuck they gave you my room <laughs> But we've been staying there for a long time. Mm -hmm. So this last time I stayed there, they have a smoking balcony. So I would roll joints and go out with my blue. And they'd be having conferences. There's a restaurant underneath, uh, a la fresco restaurant outside. Yeah. There's a, 
a little area where they have conferences and then there's like a little setting deck and I would fucking light a joint and smoke it like a chimney and when they were looking around I'd just have my blue out there but I'd have my joint in my right hand I fucked with them for a whole weekend. <laughs> Josh, they couldn't fake. They were everywhere. And then I would leave then I would leave the joint for them in the ashtray like a fucking <laughs> like Spider Man. Then the next day I would go to they have a way that you could walk out of the vestibule <laughs> mm -hmm. through a thin alley. But guess what? If it's windy, you could smoke in that alley and it goes right back to the thing. Again, I'm watching them fucking with radios. I smell it in the north corner. I had them going fucking bananas for four fucking... I love torturing people with marijuana smoke. I love, it's one of my most favorite. Right. I had a friend who used to sell her eggs for cocaine. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> she used to sell her eggs. That is not funny. This bitch saw... And she was pretty. She was about 20, Holy 22, shit. 23. Oh, my... She moved out here. She was confused and shit. And who was she, buying her eggs knowing that that's how she She was, went to some clinic wow. and she stayed clean. And then they would give her the big paycheck, and she was a waitress at the Laugh Factory. But she was selling her That's eggs. a fucking process to had, go through, and, you know. And they had to come get her, dog. I bet. Like the family had to come here and get her and take her away. In I the bet. In a white little van and Dude, shit. that's no joke. And she was yelling Abe Lincoln. And Holy shit. How many like, eggs can you sell? I don't know. She was an egg. You make them, you know, she until was you don't. Egg, so. She was an egg-making machine. But you got to take drugs but, to but get they, them. Yes, yeah. they were giving her the drugs, and she was snorting blow. And she was I don't going, think that's allowed. Dog, it doesn't really matter. It's like a, it's like what I'm telling you about my wife. Like my wife is straight. She right. was raised straight. So my wife was raised to believe a certain thing about marijuana. And for so, years so, yeah. she was at the comedy store and she was exposed to it. She just never liked it. And then her and I started dating. And she realized that I was I would go downstairs and smoke and you know, when you first start dating people you accept things. Sure. You accept things because you're, you're hoping you'll get rid of those things. With her, she was drinking, and I was smoking, and I was doing a lot of other things. But she didn't know those things. Then she caught on after a while. But that's not here or there. What the point I'm getting to is, after about a year and a half one day, I came upstairs, and she goes, why do you need to smoke? You know, and I explained to her that I had been smoking since I was a kid. Wait, why do you? To help your, like, anxiety, help you focus, or well, make you creative, or... Listen, I think man, everyone has their let own me, reason. Let me explain something. Let me be honest with you. I mean, you. it makes you feel good. All these emotions didn't become public till about 15 years ago. <laughs> Before then, there was no anxiety. There was no fucking well, there sleeplessness. Was. We just didn't talk There about was it. no insomnia. Yeah, nobody talked right. about that shit. You just felt fucked up. Mm -hmm. When I was a kid, I yeah, felt... Yeah, you were just an asshole. <laughs> when I was a kid, I felt fucked up. Me too. And whenever I smoked pot, it made me feel balanced. Yeah. Whenever I drank alcohol, it was this yearning feeling. Like, that would give me anxiety. Like, I wanted to do, but I couldn't. Like, I was getting held back. When you do cocaine, that's a certain horrible I've anxiety. never done cocaine. You know, any of those drugs. But when I smoked reefer, I was home. Yeah. And, and it took Terry, me to say, Terry, can you sit down for a second? Like, oh, number one, I'm never going to quit smoking pot. I'm never going to quit smoking. What about if you go home and meet my parents? I don't really give a Frenchman's fuck. I'll take a walk around the corner. I go, for some people, it's a cocktail. For some people, it's playing tennis. For some people, Yoga. it's for this. For me, it's there's nothing like going for a walk with a Walkman or an iPad on or whatever the fuck they call them, iPod, and having music on and smoking a joint and walking a mile and clearing your head. Yeah. And if you have a problem, that's your solution. You'll get it by the end of that walk. Marijuana will help you attain that. That's how I always felt about it, to be okay, strictly so honest with you. I, I feel similarly, and I gave it up because, I, like I said, I was raised like Terry. My parents were... You know, not into it at all. And my uh, and my stepdad, he came into our lives when I was uh, fourteen, and he, like I said, you know, he was pretty pretty famous musician. And my mom made him give up all all weed, booze, everything, drugs, like nothing. He couldn't do anything. But that meant that when I was going out and smoking pot, if I came home and he was there, I could get fucking busted like fast. And there was one time that I came in and I reeked of it. I knew it and she knew it and my mom was like not having it. And I, you know, she said like, I knew you were at Sam Fine's house and you know, you got high. And I was like, what? No, I'm not high, I'm not high, I don't smoke. And she was like, Harvey, 
Come here, come here and smell smell her and look at her and tell me if she's high. And my stepdad, who looks like Jerry Garcia, if you don't know who he is, Google him. His name's Harvey Brooks. Looks like Jerry Garcia. Gets in my face and just, like, stares at me. And I'm thinking, fuck. I'm so fucking busted. And he just, like, nods, looks at my mom, and he's like, nope, she's good. She's totally not high. And she was like, oh, okay, I'm sorry, and walks out. He just looks at me and he goes... I want a quarter pounder with cheese. I want fries. I want a milkshake. Tomorrow, on the top of the stairs in the basement, you don't tell your fucking mother. <laughs> and I was like, done. <laughs> like, he had me so busted. And she wouldn't let him eat shit like that. So, like, I went out and got him everything and, like, left it like an offering at the top of his steps because I was like, I don't tell on me. And I lied. I mean, I got caught with... I got caught with weed in my bag and my mom found it and like took it out and I came in and it was like sitting on the counter as so I walked by and I like did the double take when I was like, oh, shit. Like, yeah. yeah. Jewish moms don't fuck around. Nope. I, was, I wasn't even high <laughs> and my mom did this to me when she just came up to me with, are you, are you high? Are you messed up? I'm like, I wasn't high, but she would look for that. I, that's why I never did it. I like, I, I smoked. I made a nose for it. My mom's always like, I think I was like 16, it. 17 maybe. That was the first time? Yeah. Jeez, that was late. My mom died when I was 15 and a half, and I hid it from her. You did? And I knew she got high. Yeah, and why'd she, you hide it from she, her? You knew she got high. And she knew I got high, but she didn't. Because one time she got in a bind for weed, she asked one of my friends. <laughs> Oh my has, but maybe she was baiting him or something because he goes you know your mom on, on an off color asked me if I could get a weed and I brushed it off like I didn't know what he was talking about yeah I mean but no I hit it from my you hit it well see so here's the thing This and this is why I've been trying to you know change this conversation and, and I think it's so interesting that like you'd say to your wife that you know like you don't give a fuck if her parents know that you smoke, but you told me that you don't want your your daughter to ever know that you smoke. No, pot. not right now. Not well, not the, right now. I get it. She's not four. the next couple of years. I don't want her to. My almost six year old today asked me as I walked out the door, "Mom, what's weed?" And I said, "That's just another thing they call cannabis." And she was like, "Oh, okay." No, there's going to be questions. Yeah, you know, there's going to be questions. Will you ever smoke it in front of her? I'm not sure. Not right now. I'll dodge. I'll dodge the questions. I'll explain to her as much as I can. Wait, but what happens if you just normalize it? Like, so my kids are, I mean, given it's, this has like been a thing like for the past year, they sort of caught on. I, I, I hit it. And I, as I was going to say about the postpartum stuff, you know, I, uh, I got when I finally did have my other kid, my second kid, and after I had her, like I was not right still, but I wasn't like a sobbing mess. But I was like, you know, I'm not. I still don't really feel right, but I had like, you know, bad anxiety. And uh, I was talking to uh, my friend Tom Grubbs, who who actually, you know, um, is a partner at this farm in uh, in Forest Grove, Oregon, uh, Moto Perpetual Farm, and I, and he was like, you're not right. Like he's known me since high school, so he's like, you don't act like you something's off. And I told him like oh, I haven't been right since I had my kid. And he was like, you know, do you still smoke pot? And I was like, what? No, I'm a mom. I don't smoke pot anymore. Like, I got really judgy and pissy with him. And he was like, whoa, okay. And he said, you know, I, I really kind of think that, like, might level you out. Like, exactly what you were just saying. And he's like, you should try that. I really think that might work for you. And I thought about it. And I thought about it. And I was like, you know, I always really loved smoking pot. And it's exactly what you said. Like, that I just felt okay leveled out something about that drug right does it makes me feel like i'm home I, right well, listen i could sit here and sit and give you blow smoke up your ass and tell you no it's in a year i'm gonna quit smoking dope and, <laughs> yeah no i'm and, never and quitting I, again. I thought about it i thought about it because i'm not getting as high i don't get the results i want to as when we first started i want to sure. i want to fucking drool like so can you take days, like a two-month break drool. and then go back to it although well, what how a, would you what's sleep? my options you i know? don't know I have such a system. I, what about dabs? Have you tried that? No, that's too strong. I can't have a blowtorch in my house. You don't have to have a blowtorch. You can use a, like the the no, hot nail. No, no, please, for the love of Christ. <laughs> have you done that? That's a, have listen, you done a dab? How have I done dabs we, and you haven't? We ha we've done them in here. Oh, well, then It's yeah. just too much work for what I want to uh, But you've you. seen the hot nail that you plug in, right? Yeah, that's I've like seen a totally all that stuff. Thing. No, 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 no. I don't want none of that stuff in the house. I really like those. I like my little pipe. That's how I like to fly. I have I dabs. Like, I, have, I have my little pipe. I have a fucking stick to clean it out with a little shish kebab stick. I steal from my wife. You go out in the backyard. I got a secret compartment. <laughs> I go out in the backyard. 
I zip it up and I put it back in the CD <laughs> compartment and nobody knows fucking nothing. Okay, so I have a cabinet that all of my weed's in. You can see it and like any, you know, bong or my bowl, whatever. My kids know where it is. I have it locked and I have the key. But they know where it is and like they'll come in and I'll have it open. I'll have had it open and my older one will be like, smells like marijuana in here. Why, why were you in the cabinet? But I'll vape in front of them. My, my older one, and when I'm being, a, a, I mean, because obviously Tom was right and, you know, the weed worked. And, and so I've been using it ever since for postpartum depression and for anxiety. I'm a better parent. My daughter will, my older daughter will go into my bag and find this and and give it to me. Like when it's in its case and will hand it to me and be like, mom, do you, do you think maybe, you know, you want to smoke some pot because you seem like you're having a really hard time. And she's not wrong. And you know what? When we were growing up, like, kids made, and, you know, earlier than that, kids made their parents drinks and stuff, you know, like all the Sally Draper Mad Men type of thing, which, by the way, you know, my, my daughter knows how to make a couple of drinks also, but wh- don't I just, don't we take the taboo off so that they're not brainwashed like we were brainwashed, like Terry was brainwashed, like I was brainwashed, you know, and thinking that, like, this is the gateway drug. So if my kids just grow up around pot and they don't ever feel like they have to hide it from me, they'll ask me about it. They know it's something that actually helps me and that makes me feel better. And then in the, I'm a better parent to them because I'm all leveled out. And, you know, if one of them's, like, making an annoying noise sitting next to me for 10 minutes, I don't want to kill her because, you know, that's annoying. I can sit through, you know, a fucking Barbie movie if I'm high. <laughs> like, And I don't mean get so high I can't parent, but to just not feel, you know, kids are annoying. You've got one. There's they're a cute, lot of considerations here. There's a lot of considerations. Number one. What if you went to a movie and something bad would have happened? I won't get high then. I and wouldn't you, get high. And you were high. But I wouldn't. And nothing happened when you got in the car. Nothing happened. You I don't got, dri- I don't drive with my kids whatever. in the car. You got I'm in high. the Uber, whatever. What I'm saying is that it's, you're going to feel bad that you were high. There's so many aspects. But to you this. don't. You can smoke pot and not be high. Is my point. No, everybody's different. Everybody has a different right. situation. Remember, when I sent my daughter down to have the talk with her. It's not just going to be about marijuana. Right. It's it's going to be, no, 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 no. You have no fucking idea. But you got to so talk to her about all drugs. Sure. No, there's not all drugs. I got to talk to her. I put a machine gun in somebody's head and kidnapped them and did four years in prison. So my situation is a, a bit that's a different situation. So you understand situation. me? My situation is a little bit more different than yours. Right. I'm sure when she goes to her grammar school in this area, they're going to have a dad program. Mm-hmm. And they will. someday she's going to come home and go, Daddy, what do you know? And I got to talk to her and bob and weave a little bit. I can't drop <laughs> it out of hell when she's fucking six. This story goes from A to B to C to your grandmother dying. <laughs>